Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your Daily Breaker video and in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how the different stages of a relationship do tend to, do tend to affect the anxious preoccupied attachment style differently um, because it's really important to note that there are different phases of each relationship and there are different stages that we will struggle with depending on our attachment style more than others. So with that being said, um, this is basically based off of Dr. Susan Campbell's work, the six stages of a relationship, or sorry, the five stages of a relationship that she discusses, but I split out in the work that I was doing with clients over the years, the dating and the honeymoon phase is two very separate things because the dating phase is sort of like the pre-vetting phase where we're getting to know somebody, learning about them, seeing if they're maybe a good fit for us. We can be on just a couple dates. The honeymoon phase is once we're sort of like moving into more exclusivity in the relationship. So once we're sort of in a position where we're going, okay, we're going to get more serious. We make a commitment to one another. Um, any form of just becoming more serious and having that conversation is the rite of passage that moves us into the honeymoon phase. And then what's after that is basically the power struggle phase, the um, stability phase, commitment and bliss phases. And so it's really important for us to identify where we are in a relationship so that we can actually work to overcome whatever our patterns are because there are different challenges each attachment style will face in each specific stage. So for example, we will often see the, the anxious preoccupied attachment style individual want to hang on to the honeymoon phase of a relationship forever. A lot of anxious attachments are like, wait, what do you mean I'm not supposed to be in the, the honeymoon phase forever? And, and sometimes they can have a lot of resistance to the idea that in the power struggle phase, though it's not a fun phase, it's a very important phase for relationships. And the reason being is that in that phase specifically, it's designed to help us drop our mask. So whatever we were withholding, whatever fears we weren't sharing yet, whatever we were afraid to really be vulnerable about in a relationship dynamic so far, whatever needs we weren't sharing, whatever patterns we weren't communicating, boundaries we were repressing, um, it's all about like learning to share those things, share the fears, share the vulnerabilities, the core wounds, the needs, the boundaries, et cetera. So we can actually get to know somebody at a deeper level, which is a very important thing for the progression of a relationship dynamic. Think of like the dating and honeymoon phase as being excitement and infatuation and conditional love. And then as we start to show ourselves more fully and open up, we actually give room to be loved in a more unconditional way. Because one of the big rites of passage that then moves a relationship along in the power struggle phase is acceptance, is learning to see and share who we truly are at a deeper level, let somebody get to know our deep in ourselves. And as we learn to show that and, and receive acceptance and love for that and vice versa, the bond of a relationship really grows. And a big reason I see people actually sort of um, cheating in relationships or looking outside of the relationship is that they're not moving through the power struggle phase. They're not learning to see and accept one another's flaws. And so they're not getting that opportunity to bond more deeply. They usually carry this like subconscious perception, like, oh, we're supposed to stay in the, the honeymoon phase. Why are we leaving the honeymoon phase? And people have a lot of resistance to that idea, not understanding that those sort of rocky parts of a relationship and the different conversations that need to be had and the resolution that needs to be had with arguments and disagreements. Um, and by the way, things need to be resolved in relationships in order to get out of the power struggle phase and, and to progress all the way to the bliss phase. Reaching the bliss phase, so after the power struggles, the stability, commitment, and then bliss, and reaching the bliss phase means you've learned to resolve and work through things in your relationship dynamic. When you don't, you get stuck. And when you're stuck, it doesn't feel good. And then the subconscious mind doesn't get needs met. And then it's just a matter of time before the mind goes, well, my needs aren't being met in the relationship. So I will look outside of the relationship. And, and that can be a really challenging dynamic. So um, the anxious preoccupied tends to struggle the most in the power struggle phase, obviously. Um, all attachment styles do to a certain degree, but then there are other phases that affect them more differently. So um, the reason being that the anxious preoccupied, some of the biggest things they'll see in this phase of a relationship are a lot of the, the fears of opening up, of showing themselves, because they fear, like, if I show my true self, if I show my weaknesses, my flaws, if I open up too much, I could be left. 
Um, and I could be abandoned and I could be alone and these different things. So sometimes they'll try to stay perfect or not want to open themselves up at a deeper level completely. Um, they can be very emotionally available, very open in certain ways. But when it comes to, um, for example, like their needs and their boundaries, that's where they're going to going to avoid opening up. That's where you're going to see them like withhold and stay in like people pleasing mode. Oh, I need to keep pleasing and, and doing all these things. But all that does is creates resentment. If you're always pleasing and then you're never allowing yourself to be seen and heard and understood as a person in your truth, in your more vulnerable moments with your own needs and boundaries, then you are going to feel frustrated because you're going to perceive an imbalance in the relationship and basically conflict is a perceived imbalance in a relationship in some form, whether it's, you know, a time imbalance and, you know, the amount of space people require that being an imbalance, et cetera. So, so it's really important to recognize these patterns. And with all of that being said, those are some big parts of the anxious preoccupied. Um, and then moving beyond the power struggle phase, anxious preoccupied can also struggle with the stability phase of a relationship. They can actually as well be so attached to these romantic idealisms and have such strong ideas about how relationships should be meeting so many of their needs and should be at this like optimal peak level all the time that sometimes in the stability phase of a relationship when things are settling down and you've kind of come off the roller coaster of the power struggle phase they sometimes find a lot of resistance based on their expectations um, to the stability phase and that's when they can actually enact a lot of protest behaviors that actually bring them backwards back into the power struggle phase yet again and that can be very challenging for the anxious preoccupied individual as they progress into the commitment phase they love it like they want to talk about the commitment in the future and they really thrive in that phase differently than the fearful avoidant um, and obviously in the dating and honeymoon phase they have a great time um, but power struggle followed by stability phase is that sort of secret phase where a lot of things can end up going wrong, though we would think otherwise, um, really when a lot of friction takes place there. And if we retract back into the power struggle phase, it can be very problematic for relationships long term. And so it's really important that when you're working through things that you have the ability to recognize what phase of a relationship am I at? Um, all of the advanced attachment cell courses we have inside of the school are literally for this. It's your roadmap or your blueprint for navigating each of the six stages, determining which stage you're in, and then learning what are my rites of passage to move to the next phase? How can I actually do the work? And then there are reprogramming exercises, communication exercises, needs exercises, step by step to give you the blueprint out of that phase so that you can continuously progress your relationship into the next one. Um, so you can check that out. I'll put a link for that in the description box below. But what you really want to make sure you're doing is knowing what stage am I in, why, what am I doing right, what am I not doing properly, and how can I continuous, how can I continuously move forward? And it's important for anxious preoccupied individuals to remember that even though there's this like knee-jerk reaction, this like subconscious programming that creates this like impulsive behavior to people please, to give up themselves, to forget about themselves and put themselves last on the totem pole and people please so that they can be loved and so that they can be liked and not excluded. Um, you know, even though those core wounds tend to drive that behavior, that's driven from a place of fear and not truth. Truth is like when you learn about who you are, what you want to, you take yourself into consideration equally. You feel comfortable and safe sharing yourself and opening up in a relationship dynamic, sharing what your needs are, learning to also meet your needs as well so you don't put all this pressure and expectation on the relationship always as being like one of the only major sources of what can get your needs met. And that you learn to feel comfortable in your own skin and, and sort of being there with yourself um, on a regular basis. And the more you do that and the more you come into yourself and you think it's safe to have boundaries and you show up and you communicate and see your needs through, the more you're going to feel seen and heard and understood in a relationship, because truly that's what you're desiring. Those deeper parts of you are feeling seen and heard and understood. And so the more you do that and allow yourself to be seen, the more you are going to thrive and enjoy a relationship dynamic overall. So hopefully that all makes lots of sense. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel. And I will see you in the next video.